Again, now we are talking about my curriculum picks for teaching writing to my multiple grade level children in our homeschool. <laughs> this is actually, I think, the third or fourth little section of this series, and it started with um, how I map out and organize my thoughts. Um, from beginning to end for planning my new year. So if you haven't seen that one yet, you can start by checking that out. So now we have arrived at how I'm going to teach writing or what our curriculum is going to be for writing. I think I'm gonna do writing and spelling in the same video. So yeah, so this is what we are going to be using to teach writing and spelling in homeschool to buy multi grade level children. My method for teaching writing is pretty simple. <laughs> it's pretty simple and what we do is mail time Mondays. We actually just write um, and it's been working out really well for us. I think that this time around we're gonna get a little bit further deeper into it because in conjunction with our language arts um, course of study, we'll be dissecting different parts of writing a bit more and they will be learning more about nouns more about verbs more about um subject and verb agreement and things like that but i wanted to take a soft approach into learning that type of thing i wanted to actually have them doing those things first and then identifying it later so it may seem like it's a little bit later than it should be but i'm okay with that um i really they ask me what a noun is then i'll tell them but i'm not really a fan i don't really want to introduce it to them in that way i want them to be comfortable writing first and then we can go back and dissect and identify things if that makes any sense so for me just having them write is really super important so i feel like my process is pretty simple on mondays we do mail time mondays and we create mail to send to people <laughs> it's pretty simple and so how I lay that out in my Evernote portfolio under our writing goal section is pretty much a similar thing to what I did last year. I just kind of added a few extra things to it and we're revisiting those same things from last year again, but in more depth, if that makes any sense. So some of my writing goals are we can do a letter to family members um, when I grow up. Um, we can make a list, we can write a story about me, we can write a book, which my kids happen to, that's probably their favorite way of writing is to write a book. Um, we can write about my family, we can write a poem, we can write a book report, um, we can write a story on the unit study. Um, and then what I added this time around was some specific language arts um, ideals to make sure that we are incorporating that into our writing. So I just laid that out to give me, to just um, remind me of what I want to make sure that we're focusing on. So like adjectives, adverbs, nouns, verbs, conjunctions, interjections, pronouns, prepositions, that type of thing. So I just laid out that entire list of goals. And then from there, I make, you know, I'm sure to check off the things that we did to make sure that we're not doing too much of one thing and not visiting something else. So this is very like customizable and I have the ability to move things around a lot. And that really works out well for me. For an example, if it's mail time Monday and they choose to do a letter to a family member and Cameron says I want to write a letter to Grammy and we're going to write a letter to Grammy but um, I know that I need to cover adverbs. So then I just make sure that I am kind of guiding him in the direction of using more adverbs in his letter to his grandmother. Does that make sense? And then the beauty of it is that we actually get to use that writing by putting it into an envelope or a package and sending it off hopefully to make someone else's day. 
<laughs> so I want to be as creative as possible and I want it to apply to what we're actually experiencing in life at the time so that's why I leave a lot more room for to be creative and to let the the children have um, a little bit of say so or a lot of bit of say so and what we're actually going to be writing because I feel like if they're excited about writing then the learning possibilities are endless um, so I try to really manage my approach to the topic and that way I don't have a lot of pushback and a lot of fight and then it becomes difficult for all of us and then everything goes downhill from there so that's how I approach writing um in addition to that we're going to be working on for my oldest who is eight we're going to be working on cursive writing it's something that he expressed interest in and i kind of wanted to um I, I just thought it would be good for him to practice and he actually expressed interest in it so i was like yeah let's do that so i feel like writing practice for us every day is good the younger kids will continue to do their handwriting practice um and then my older son will start doing his handwriting practice by learning cursive and how we do that is we're just going to split it up into the letters um we could uh, mix it up by doing different words that start with that letter um i don't i don't know i i really try not to be too constrictive about how we're going to do it for me it just works well that i know what i would like to cover and i just let my creativity and the kids creativity take it the rest of the way they're actually really good with coming up with ideas for how we're going to do things um now the app that i use for that is just a cursive app i believe that the one that i got was free and i i think i had to pay like a dollar like 99 cents to remove the ads or something like that so we're going to be using that and then we have our regular apps that we use for um practice and then we're just going to practice on worksheets some days it's really kind of opened it's open <laughs> but i like it that way so if you're not open and you need more even more structure then you can find an actual book that takes you from you know through all of the alphabet so you can see a physical page that they complete and you know exactly what they're doing but I've tried that in the past and I felt like it, it was just really restricting for us so it didn't work very well and then I ended up having a lot of resources that we weren't using completely and I just felt like it was a waste so I like doing things better this way I hope that makes sense <laughs> I feel like I say, I oh, hope that makes sense a lot. Anyway, so that's how we are doing that. Now moving on to, oh, now how we do our writing. I let them write wherever they're most excited about. A lot of times we write inside of our, um, a lot of times we write inside of our composition notebooks, but we also use our writing pages and i simply just got them i'll find the link and put it in the description box below but it was just a file full of different um printable writing sheets and these we like a lot because we can draw in the top section and then write in the bottom section and we use them all the time so this is an example of a writing project that we did like i feel like it was like the end of last year or something but we just have these writing pages that i print out and include in their binder and they just have this section for them to draw up at the top and then the lines for them to write at the bottom and so i just print out a bunch of those and then i include them inside of their binders so that they have a stash of pages and on the back i double side print on these so that the front has the space for drawing and then writing at the bottom and then there's more space for writing on the opposite side so that's how we're doing that and now let's talk about spelling so my spelling approach is rather simple we just i'm trying to just spell you know <laughs> and so all i need is a little bit of extra you know push in the idea section of which set of words to spell i know that there's all different types of approaches and to be honest in the beginning it just confused me and the more confused i was the less we actually just learned to spell so i try to just keep it simple on my brain and it works for us so what i do is i actually use the k12reader.com and if you go to k12reader.com they have 
um, spelling list that are set that are separated by grade level so they have a first grade spelling list they have a second grade spelling list third grade spelling list fourth grade spelling list and I just basically go in and and I figure out where we are as far as spelling is concerned. For us, we are about at the third grade level for both my older son and my younger son. So I went into that section for the third grade spelling list and they have word lists that are separated by the week. And then they have a list of five activities for you to do for each set of spelling words. It's really, really simple. So I just take the link to that word list and I put it into my goals section for spelling inside of my um, Evernote planning page for spelling. <laughs> and then after I do that, I just know that when this week is coming, these are the list of words that we are going to be working on. And then I just follow the activity for each day that we are working on them. So it's just exactly what they suggested. On Mondays, we're going to be writing it two times. On Tuesdays, we're gonna be circling the correct spelling. So they have an actual worksheet for you to complete to circle the correct spelling words. We may use the worksheet um, probably on their iPad or we may not and I may actually put those words the same thing off of the worksheet onto the board and we'll all do it together because they really like to do things that way and I prefer it that way but time just doesn't always allow but I do try to make sure that I incorporate it from time to time or at least once and once or twice a week or something like that so we'll circle the correct spelling and I'll use that worksheet for that um, then we have dictation sentences I just grab that worksheet and I dictate to them and they write it out we use different things they can write it on the mirror with our little mirror chalk markers um, we can write it on the actual chalkboard in our playroom or in their room we try to be really creative with it we could if it's warm enough outside we write it with sod, sidewalk chalk on the sidewalk I try to be as creative as possible with how we complete them but that's just the basics for what we are actually completing so the dictation sentences are on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, we do the fill in the blank worksheet and then we do write the missing letter on Friday if we get to that because Fridays is our free day to kind of lose all of our structure. So then the apps that I have chosen to download to add as a little extra reinforcement and practice for us when we want to mix it up a little bit is the spelling bee. Then of course I have the curse of practice app that I mentioned earlier. Then I have the Mind Snack apps. My kids happen to really, really like Mind Snack, um, the Mind Snack games. Um, they can be a challenge, and I was really surprised that they were able to do them, but you would be, this is why I'm a fan of devices. I know that lots of people have their hesitations on devices, but I feel like because of my kids' use of devices, I, feel, I really feel like it's been a brain stretcher for them and they're very capable of so many more things than I feel like we were capable of when we were younger. <laughs> but anyway, we have the kids vocab mind snacks and then we have the SAT vocab mind snacks and then I have ABC phonics animals for Savannah and then little bees ABCs for Savannah as well. And that is what we're using for writing and spelling. <sighs> I made it through you guys and hopefully, I don't think this one was long. I think I was short and sweet on this one, right? Okay, so if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. Check out the videos from before if you didn't come for the videos that were prior to this. But this is my little series on how I planned out our year. You can start with the very first video on how I organized my thoughts from beginning to end and then work your way through all of the subjects to explore what I have chosen to use for curriculum for each subject for homeschooling my multiple grade level children. <laughs> so I will see you in our next video. Bye!